In this video, we're going to go over my over-the-board game against Michael Kern. This was round number two of a September uh, quad that we had at the local club. So four players, I'll play all. Let's dive right into it. So I started off with E4. I've not played E4 in an official over-the-board game in probably over 15 years that I can recall. I don't think I've played E4 at all recently. Um, but I'm working on a new opening course, 1E4 for chess goals. It's going to be an attacking E4 course, and this scotch variation is going to be in the course. It's called the Potter variation of the scotch opening. So it's E4, E5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, e takes d, knight takes d. Here there's two common moves, bishop c5 and knight f6. Michael played bishop c5. And this is what I've been preparing for the course, this move knight to b3. It's not as common as bishop to e3, but the idea is we're going to kick this bishop right away, play queen e2, get these other pieces out, and castle queen side. And the black king is going to end up over here on g8, so we can get some sort of pawn storm going, attacking the black king. So it's very nice system that attacks the black king, but also what tends to happen is the queen side pawn storm for black isn't as quick as you would see in a Sicilian. So in a Sicilian, this c pawn is over on the e file, and you see much quicker pressure from black, pushing those pawns, maybe putting a rook on c8, barreling down the c file. But with the four pawns in a row here, at least to me, it seems like it's more difficult for black to counterattack against our king position. Okay, so let's see how this unfolds. Bishop back to b6, queen e2, d6, knight c3, knight e7, bishop e3. So this is all natural. Um, I'm okay with white, with uh, black taking the bishop on e3. I'll recapture with the queen and queenside castle. All right, so at this point, the stockfish eval is 0.6. I have to be pretty happy with that. I haven't done anything too crazy. I really like the position and I like the attacking potential. Here queen e8 is played. Um, so I looked at a lot of lines when I was preparing this chapter for the opening course and I knew in my mind that f5 was a critical idea. So let's say f5 was played. What I can do is take b6, take f5, and then play f4. Um, and if we kind of follow this stockfish line, Rook e8, queen d2, knight e3, rook e1, takes, takes. Trades are happening, but white is still holding an advantage here. So this is still probably between half a pawn and one pawn advantage for white. So even if my opponent played f5, which I think is the critical move, I still like the position for white. So here he played queen e8. Um, I just continued with the plan. I know in a lot of lines the king belongs on b1, so I decided to start with this, king to b1. Bishop to e6 was played, and here I played f4. So I was thinking during the game, f5 is probably coming by black, and if black doesn't play f5, I would like to play f5 myself and use that to kind of uh, shut down these minor pieces on black side and get my pawn storm going on the g-file. So here rook d8 was played, and I took on b6, so bishop takes b6, a takes back, pawn to g4. So Stockfish is saying this is an inaccuracy, f5 first was better. Um, the reason for that, and I, I thought this was a critical tester in the game, but I needed to go a little deeper in my calculation. This is one of my takeaways from almost every classical over the board game I've been playing is my calculation isn't as good as it could be. What I looked at in the game was this critical move for black d5, but honestly I didn't look at it too deeply. I just thought, well, if black plays d5, maybe I play f5, this bishop has to retreat, no big deal. Mm -hmm. The bishop back is actually a mistake, d4 is the critical line, um, and now I need to think. Okay, knights hanging and bishops hanging at the same time. What do I want to do here? This is something that I needed to calculate out a little more deeply. I think in the game I thought 
Um, I'm just showing the engine lines. I think I thought I was going to take actually, take back, but maybe I was just being a little bit lazy and thinking, well, if D4 happens, I'll determine at that time what to do. Maybe I was thinking Knight B5, the top engine move, but I don't remember for sure. Um, that's something that I should have calculated a little more clearly. So I played G4 with the idea of F5. Michael took on B3. Now here I had a really deep think in the game. I knew in some cases you, you're supposed to take back with the C pawn. Like I saw that in at least one line, maybe two lines when looking at this opening. The reason for that, it looks crazy, but if you take back with the C pawn, this A pawn helps protect the A file. So you'll see what happens coming up. Um, but I decided I'm okay with an A file attack because it's going to take so much time for black to get something going that I felt like I could get my king side attack going and if needed I could play king c1 and knight b1 to stay safe. So I was okay with this attack on the queen side but Stockfish says c takes b was definitely the better move. Alright so now knight g6 was played. I played queen f2 defending this pawn, also eyeing the h4 square, and I'm going to try to push the pawns next. Rook d7. I was very surprised by this move. I immediately understood the point because I don't know any other reason why rook d7 will be played except to play queen a8, move the queen up the a file, rook to a8, and queen down to a1 checkmate. So the plan is very straightforward relocate those pieces. Um, and I calculated that I should be okay. I could always bail out with king c1. And I have moves like bishop to b5, uh, coming back to a4. And here I spent a lot of time. And I was even looking at the line that happened in the game at this point. So I've been critical of my calculation, but this was actually a moment where my cal actually my calculation was good. Um, I tend to be pretty hard on myself and I don't remember actually thinking after the game like, oh, you actually did a good job on calculating in this part of the game. So I'm trying to give myself a little credit. Uh, so after h4, I calculated the line with queen a8, h5, this knight retreating, g6, or sorry, h6. And if g6 is played, I knew I had some ideas where I could actually rook lift this over to a4 with the right timing because the knight couldn't take after queen takes I threaten a checkmate on g7 with my pawn on h6. I know it sounds crazy but I was looking at this line so I played h4 queen to a8 h5 it's too slow to try to move the queen up here because there's not really a forced mate the king can always move so that would drop a piece knight e7 Bishop to b5. The computer is saying uh, h6 first is a little stronger. Queen a5, h6. Now here what I was thinking during the game is that the critical line was rook to a8. And the reason that's the critical line is because it's immediately threatening the checkmate. And now I have to decide if I want to put the bishop back or run the king over. And I think I was planning on running the king over, but let's see what Stockfish thinks. Oh, king c1 is plus... Okay, it's bouncing around a lot. King c1 is plus 4, 4.7. Bishop a4 is 5.3. Yeah, so this should be okay. If queen check... Uh, yeah, even king d2. I did look at this during the game. And there's really no attack for this queen anymore. Taking b2... I take here and I'm coming up onto the h file really quickly. Okay, so even rook a8, I was in good shape. But Michael played g6, and now I got to unleash my tactic. And I was just really happy with this move once, once I got to play it during the game. Because this knight cannot take. Queen takes d4, threatening the checkmate. And if f6 is played, the rook drops. This rook is tied down to the f pawn, so it really doesn't have time to go over here. I could move the king, 
am threatening to take f6 next, or probably insert the check and try to take f6 next. So rook d4, queen a7 was played, and I kicked the queen back to b8. And now knight to d5. So I was looking at a couple different lines here. I was thinking if I could get the queen into f6, set up the checkmate that way, that would be nice. Uh, queen d4 just never really seemed like a possibility. I couldn't make it work. But then I was trying to decide between knight d5 or queen h4 first. And what I liked about knight d5 is I think it pretty much forces f6 to be played, and then I can go after the f-pawn. If queen h5 immediately... I was trying to think, is there another option for black? Maybe knight d5 just gave more chances to mess up, because I think f6 still needs to be played. Okay, so anyways, knight d5, f6. Queen h4, so a double attack here. Rook d to d8, and now I took f6 with check. And after the king came over, I did some calculating here again, and I played knight to d5. And yeah, I am pretty happy with this decision. I, I like this a lot. The problem is I'm threatening to win this knight. And if knight takes d5, e takes d5, this knight has to move. Back to a7, queen e7, and the mate is coming. So when I played knight d5, I had that line calculated. Okay, so now I'm definitely, I was being too hard on myself on the calculation. Because there was a couple moments where I did see things pretty clearly. So knight d5, knight takes d5, e takes d, knight a7, queen e7, threatening mate. And here black resigns because if rook g8, I have this queen check followed by mate. So this was a, a game in the scotch opening, potter variation it's called. You can see it here, scotch game potter variation. This is going to be one of the chapters in the new chess goals attacking e4 repertoire. So stay tuned. I'm really excited about this new repertoire course. People have been asking for one e4. Um, if you look in the description below, there's links to the three other courses we have out there. At the time of the recording of this video, there's $10 off our Slob course. Um, and you can see like course preview videos on YouTube and on the links below for all of our chapters. So usually we release one chapter in full, and then all the other chapters we do uh, previews of the chapters. So hopefully you guys like this game. Let me know what you think of the scotch as a choice for uh, the next repertoire and let me know what you think of this Potter variation. I find it very interesting and if we look at these Lee chess stats it does pretty well too in practice. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.